February and Valentine's Day are quickly approaching, which means that I am deep in my rewatch of some of my favorite rom-coms of all time. The other night I watched 10 Things I Hate About You, which is one of my favorites. It is superior to all. And like a true fiber artist, I spotted this crochet vest almost immediately and had to do more digging on it. Unfortunately, it only has like barely any screen time and it's not even that visible for most of the time that it is on the screen. It does seem like it was from a deleted scene, which sucks, but however, I still fell in love with this vest and I have not been able to stop thinking about it since I watched that movie. So this loosely fits into my series of knitting and crocheting things from movies and TV shows. However, since this one isn't very visible, I kind of just want to make it for myself anyways because I think it is very pretty. This vest is worn by Kat's best friend Mandela, who is a, the big Shakespeare fan in the movie, which I'm sure is a nod to the movie being about the Taming of the Shrew. But Mandela is a super hopeless romantic and I just love all of her outfits and everything in this movie. So we're gonna recreate this one. Um, also maybe we'll recreate her entire outfit that goes along with this. At first my plan for this was to freehand it and try and figure out the stitches based on the very blurry photos that there are of this. I was so confident that I even bought the yarn for this. It's a very thin like weight one yarn and initially I had kind of made a mock-up of one of the squares out of thicker yarn that I have and I thought I was pretty close. I actually don't think I did that bad. However, the other night I was just searching on Etsy for some vintage patterns and I somehow came across the actual pattern for this vest, which that is the second time that I have found a vintage pattern for a piece that was from a movie or a TV show, so Always check your vintage patterns if you are trying to recreate something that was from a movie set. Here is the pattern that I found, which is the exact vest, just in different colors. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how accurate this is, but it says it is from around 1973, and they call it the Romantic Victorian Vest. So once I found that pattern, I was very excited, and I immediately went to work making some of the squares. So again, let's do a little comparison. This was the square that I made just by looking at the pictures. And this is the actual square. So not very far off. I'm actually very proud of myself. I think I did the white part almost identically to how it actually is. Um, but yeah, this is obviously way more beautiful, very intricate and Here's the other square that makes up the vest. Again, very beautiful and intricate. So for this project, I need to make eight of these squares, six of these squares. These are the front, these are the straps, and then the back is one big square. So I don't think it should take that long. However, this pattern does use a 2.5 millimeter crochet hook, which is very tiny, and this yarn is very small, so it does take a little while to make one square. But yeah, I will link the pattern in the description below if you want to make it as well. If you've never followed a vintage pattern or an old pattern, sometimes certain things can be confusing, like the hook sizes that they label or the yarn sizes and that kind of stuff. So this one says to use a number one crochet hook. That's about like a 2.5, like a two millimeter, 2.5 millimeter. I just recommend using whatever hook works for the yarn that you have. This yarn I got from Amazon. It is a cotton acrylic blend and they label it as a size two fine yarn. They recommended using a two to three millimeter crochet hook so I used a 2.5 and it worked out perfectly. I'll link this below as well, along with everything that you will need if you want to make this pattern as well. So I'm going to keep making my squares and once I have them all completed, then we'll move on to the back square and then the assembly of it all. I'm hoping to have this done by Valentine's Day. It is currently January 23rd, so I think I can do it. I'm pretty sure. 
that feels like a very manageable timeline, um, but let's see if I can do it. Back for an update on the 10 things I hate about you crochet vest. So I completed all of my squares for the front of the vest. It looks so tiny. Um, so there's six of these squares, the white with the, oop, the white in the center with the red on the outside. And then there are eight of these all red squares. So I'm probably gonna weave in my ends and then block these next because some of them are kind of not, they don't sit very well. So I'm gonna block them all and then I'm going to start working on the back of the vest, which the back is one big square. There's no pictures of the back, so I actually don't know what it even looks like. But this is the little diagram that they give. So the back is just one big square. I think the center of it is mostly white and then it's red around the outside. So, so hopefully I have enough yarn left I was able to make six of the all red squares and six of the white and red squares with one thing of red. I just got a second one to then do the remaining two squares. So I feel like this will be enough. It's really thin, so the yarn kind of goes a long way. But if not, I'll buy more. So I will include some footage of me blocking all of my squares and then... I will come back when I have the back finished and then we'll sew it all together. So I decided to wet block the squares just to help them lay a bit flatter. So to do this, I just submerged all of the squares in my sink full of water and then I squeezed all the water out and laid them flat on a towel. I rolled the towel up and squeezed all the remaining water out of the squares. Then it was time to pin them to my blocking mats. So I pinned all of these squares so that they would be equal size as well, which I think ended up being four inches by four inches. So there are all of my red squares and then my white and red squares as well. So I just left all of those to dry so that they would be flat and ready for me to sew them together. All right, slight update. So all of my squares have been blocked now. Um, I've got all of my red squares and then I have my red and white squares. So all of those are ready to be attached and sewed together. I haven't started that yet. Um, I did start on the back panel. So this is just one big square and I'm almost done. I think I have like one more side to do with the red. So yeah, we are almost there. Then I'm going to block this one. But while that is drying, I will probably be sewing these together and I will make sure to film that while I'm doing it. This is a pattern from the 70s though, so I don't think there's much instruction as to how to sew them together other than just how to place them. For the red squares, it is four of them. So you have two together like this, and then, so it'll be like two and two, and then that makes up like one side of the vest. And then you do the same for the other side. And then for the these squares, which are the straps, it is just three squares together like this, like that, for both sides. So again, I will put some footage of me sewing these together, but yeah, we're getting closer. And then I will show you this again when it is done. I'm almost there. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. I like how the back brings more of that white in because 
there's not much weight on the front so I'm finally at the point where I am starting to sew together my squares there's not much instruction as far as putting these squares together and how to sew them together but this is the little graphic that they show in the pattern of where each of the squares is supposed to go and they say to use whip stitch to sew them together so I've already kind of done one side of this so here are my four front squares sewn together and I did just use whip stitch for this so you can see that little join and then I did three of my strap squares and I whip stitched those together as well and now I just have it pinned with uh, stitch markers so that I know where I need to sew the strap onto the front piece. So far kind of have like this part it looks something like this and then I just need to do sew together all of the squares for this side and I need to finish the back. So I haven't finished that yet. I think I have only like one more side to do. But yeah, getting very close. My deadline to finish this is by Valentine's Day. I have a Galentine's little event that I'm probably going to wear this to and I might be going out to try and find a dress that looks like Mandela so that I can kind of recreate her little outfit and I will show you when I have everything sewn together but yeah I might also film a little bit of sewing it together so that you can see how I'm doing it I'm just doing whip stitch and attaching them how you would attach any normal granny squares. Um, these are a little bit more difficult because the edges are more rounded than they are fully square, but it's not that difficult. So I will insert a little clip and show you and try and kind of explain how I'm doing that. But yes, I'm getting very close. I'm very happy with how this is turning out so far and I can't wait to see how it ends up at the end. So I have two of my squares that I want to join together. I have just a scrap piece of the yarn that I cut and my tapestry needle. My strand is kind of long because I'm going to use the same one to sew all of my squares together, but I will just show you with these right now. So we're going to start by threading our needle. And then on your squares, you're going to want to make sure that you know which side is the right side and which side is the wrong side for me this is the right side and this is the wrong side. So I have both of my squares on the right side right now and I have them next to each other. What I want to do is I want to locate my middle stitch on these little fan parts. There's 11 triple crochets right here so I'm going to find the sixth one on both of these and that is where we are going to start. So I will count through here I always count from the right to the left. So I have my first one, my second one, my third, fourth, fifth, that's my sixth right here. So I'm going to insert my needle into that stitch at the top. And I can double check this by then counting and making sure I have five on this side, which I do. So that's my middle one there. I'm going to always start on my left square and then go into my right square. So I'm going to do the same thing on this one to find that stitch. I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. Here's my sixth. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to insert it into that stitch as well. And then I'm just going to place these back next to each other. Honestly, finding that starting point is the hardest part when it comes to these ones. From here on out, it's pretty easy. So I am just going to pull my yarn through both of those stitches. And I'm going to leave a little tail so that I can weave it in later. So now we are going to kind of just repeat that, but in the next stitch. Sometimes it's easier to do this while they are sitting next to each other like this, but another way that can be easier is if you hold your squares together like this so that you have your wrong side facing your wrong side. So this is the wrong side and this is the wrong side. I'm going to sandwich those together like that. So now I can see my stitches a lot easier. So 
I'm going to just go into, here's where the first stitch we went into, I'm just going to go into the next one on this square, and then I'm going to do the same on this one. So you can see where your yarn went in last time, we're going to go into the stitch directly next to that. And then we're going to pull tight. And then you're just going to continue that for all of your stitches down. You're just going to keep finding your next stitch. So for me, this is my next one. I'm going to go on my next granny square and also find the next one. And then pull that yarn through. And then pull tight. So you can see that our squares are now joined at that little square. I'm going to keep going all the way down. You're just going to repeat that whip stitch over and over again in each stitch and make sure that you are putting them in the correlating stitch on both squares. Here's how my squares look all sewn together. You can see the edge where I whip stitched them. And yeah, so I'm going to do that on all of my other squares. And then eventually I will have a vest. I was finally able to finish the back panel of this vest and I have that on my blocking mat currently. And then I was just finishing up some final details. So I got the two front panels completely sewn together and there those are. And then I just went ahead and did the little white detailing stitches on the front. I finished the vest and I really love how it turned out. So here it is is there is the front and here is the back i think this came out so good again here's my reference picture and here is the final product i think it's really close and i'm so so happy with how this turned out i even was able to find a white dress that's kind of similar to the one Mandela wears so I might try to recreate this outfit and I'm just so happy with how this turned out so today is February 13th which means I did complete it in time honestly the sewing together of all the squares was not that bad it did not take that long once I just sat down and did it I put on an audiobook and the time breezed past but yeah, I'm so happy with how this turned out. I have tried it on. The sizing with this pattern was a little weird, so I was a little bit worried about that. Um, I probably could have made it slightly smaller by sizing down my hook to a 2 millimeter instead of a 2.5, but it honestly is not that bad, and I will insert some footage of me wearing it. But yeah, I'm so happy with how this turned out. And now I get to go live out my hopeless romantic Valentine's Day, just like Mandela and wear this adorably cute outfit. This would be super cute if you switched up the colors and did different colors, but I just love how this turned out. Very happy with it. Here is how it turned out when it was on the dress. Um, again, it's a little big, but I think it looks fine. I could have maybe made it slightly smaller. I might try and wash it because it's cotton, so it might shrink a bit, but very happy with how this turned out. And this dress actually works very well for this too. I thrifted this from a thrift store, so I can't link anything, but any white long sleeve dress with a collar will work. And yeah, so back. Very happy with how this vest turned out. If you want to make one for yourself, I will have the pattern and all of the materials that you need like the yarn and the hook size and everything linked in the description down below. Thanks for watching this little vlog type style video. 
if you end up making this vest, make sure you tag me on social media. All of my socials are linked in the description down below. Let me know if you liked this type of video because I have a lot of other things from movies and TV shows that I am dying to make. So leave a comment below and let me know if you want to see some of those, like Twilight, Gilmore Girls, maybe another from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. So let me know if you want to see any of those or if you come across something in a movie or a TV show that is crochet or knit and you want to see me make it. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to be notified when my next video is posted and I'll see you in the next video.